Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Ken Jacobson. I'm a professor here at Temple Law School. Uh, welcome here. Um, we're thrilled to have you at this event. Uh, actually, our relationship with the Players Coalition uh, is, uh, goes back some time. Uh, it was a snowy day in January of 2018 when uh, Malcolm and uh, Rodney and Tori Smith came here to screen a movie called Walking Wild Black. Uh, for our law students. And it was snowy, it was a blizzard. Uh, but nevertheless, they came, our students came, and it was a great evening. And a message in the uh, discussion we had uh, during, that, uh, during that presentation, during that visit, led to the relationship that we have now with the Players Coalition. We're grateful that they selected Temple Law School to uh, uh, partner with them and host this event. Uh, because we share, I think, among the schools in Philadelphia, we share the same mission, uh, and that is uh, social justice and racial equality. Uh, and here at Temple, we like to think we walk the walk like the Players Coalition does. Our clinics are very actively engaged with the community. Our students, uh, some of them, or volunteers, you ran into them, uh, they got up on their day off at 6 o'clock in the morning to be here to help participate, and it wasn't a hard sell. We had a lot of volunteers that wanted to do that, so we're grateful to them for that. Um, so with that, I'd like to, because uh, I know you're here to hear them speak, not me, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the group that's going to be talking to you today and uh, uh, speaking during the press conference. Malcolm Jenkins, of course, who's the uh, co-founder of the Players Coalition and uh, Safety for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Rodney McLeod, who's a, uh, on the board of the, uh, board member of the Players Coalition and a member of the Eagles. Uh, Kira Bradford Gray, the Chief Public Defender of Philadelphia. Uh, Dorothy Johnston Spite, uh, and I say that because her name, I wanted to make sure I pronounced this phonetically the correct way, and did I do okay, Dorothy? You did fine. All right, good. <laughs> Who is the founder of Mothers in Charge, Inc., uh, Daryl Bradell, uh, he's a client at Impact Services, you're going to hear uh, from him, and Julie Wertheimer, who's the Deputy Managing Director for Criminal Justice and Public Safety for the City of Philadelphia. So welcome. Thank you for coming, and we'll turn it over to Malcolm. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, as the co-founder of the Player Coalition, uh, one of my greatest joys has been uh, to partner with the incredible, vibrant, and compassionate community that we have here in Philadelphia. Uh, as many of you know, Anquan Bolden and I founded uh, the Players Coalition in 2017 to tackle problems of racial inequality, mass incarceration, policing, and education. The Player Coalition includes a large number of active players who use their platforms to press for meaningful change in this country and to talk about the harsh realities that create a two-tiered America. Today, we are fortunate to partner with close to 60 employers and almost 20 community providers. Together, we're welcoming home 40 returning citizens and their families for a total of 200 people, helping them find jobs and a community to support them. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Darren Thompson and his team with Impact Services and Ken Jacobson and Temple Law School for allowing this event to happen. Why is this so important? Because every year in this city, thousands upon thousands of people who have spent time in prison return home. Between 2012 and 2015, 25,000 people came back to their families and to their lives. They've paid a debt, and a heavy one, yet they face so many obstacles upon returning that effectively keep them locked up in chains. Apartment complexes won't rent to people with records. Employers won't hire people who have been in jail or prison. There are entire professions people cannot enter because of licensing requirements. The system is rigged against them. When we as a community don't help people overcome these senseless barriers, we hurt those who we should be embracing. We hurt their families who scrape together money and spare rooms to support them, and we hurt our own safety. In enabling or an in inability to obtain employment and housing is destabilizing, and it creates more, not less crime. That's why the people in this room and the events, li and events like this are so important. 
The incredible Philadelphia community is constantly banding together to find jobs for people and to help with housing. These groups that are here today provide mentorship, substance use disorder treatment, healthcare, education, and legal services. Many are returning citizens who, help, who themselves have done, who dove into supporting those who followed. They are heroes. These groups have created an ecosystem of support and we at the Players Coalition are so proud to stand with them today as we work to provide jobs and other services to people who are finally rejoining their families. So to those groups, we say thank you. And to those returning home, we say welcome. Now I'd like to introduce my teammate and another board member at the Players Coalition, Rodney McLeod. Uh, thank you, Malcolm. Good morning. This event here today is impactful because as a community, we wrap our arms around those formerly incarcerated and providing services for families here who have loved ones locked up. 113 million families today in the U.S. have an immediate family member who are currently or formerly incarcerated. And one in seven adults has an immediate family member who has been incarcerated for more than one year. Nobody understands the impact that one individual has on a family. It's the difference between living in one home for five years or the difference between living in five homes for five years. That single, single parent doesn't have the financial stability. What about the child or the children? It's the difference between a parent supporting their children when it comes to schooling, extracurricular activities, sports, that support system has now been taken from them to half or entirely. One of the hardest parts about being incarcerated is finding a job. So it's critical that when we provide help, it's, it is critical then that we provide help and hope for families who have loved ones going to prison and that we continue providing support as people come home. Today, we aim to do that. And now to share more, I'd like to introduce Keir Bradford Gray, the Chief Public Defender of Philadelphia. I feel extremely honored to be here, not just because, of course, I'm sitting next to some like really superstars uh, today, but because this is a culmination of a lot of hard work and effort on behalf of a lot of people. This event today is a really great thing, but the work that's been being done for the past two years is phenomenal and unlike anything I've ever seen in this moment. Uh, the fact that we have uh, people who are out of the realm of some of the things that we're talking about, poverty, uh, social issues, willing to stand here and stand up for people that they still understand, despite the fact that they're not in this, is what we want in our city. Uh, athletes have always been at the forefront of civil rights movements in our country, and this is no different. Criminal justice issues are a civil rights moment, and recognizing some of the things that create these civil rights violations are really important. So the time that I met uh, Malcolm and Rodney and Chris Long and all the other people from the Players Coalition, um, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't. And we had a wonderful conversation. And I was wondering, where is this going? And um, they assured me that we're in this for a long haul. And uh, I can't say that they have been nothing but truthful in that. Um, they've took, taken deep dives, learning about our system from the very beginning, when, how people come into the system to how people funnel out and they learn those points where we can make a really effective difference. And that's why we're here today. They understand the fact that community has played a huge role in getting people to understand how to rehabilitate and work well in their, with their own support structures. But they've always been left out of the conversation of criminal justice reform. It's been saved for the people with law degrees and the people who have some bureaucratic you know, relationships to the justice system. But using this partnership with community strategically has given us the best results on the front end and the back end. We have looked at community for solutions on what we call pre-entry, looking at how people sit in jail on cash bail, wealth-based determinations for no reason. We used to lump them into re-entry, but now we're being more strategic. 
because successful pre-entry, meaning making sure that people who don't need to sit in jail needlessly do not, makes re-entry that much more successful. Those uh, resources, those opportunities to be more individualized are much more important and impactful and sustainable when you do that. So I am so excited about what's going on today, bringing in this, this whole, um, I guess, uh, collaboration of everyone from law enforcement to lawyers, to community members, to judges, to our celebrities. Uh, we can't make a better recipe for change. Our criminal justice system not just needs a couple of policy tweaks, but it needs an overhaul of understanding. Our justice system has generally been designed to help people change, help people reform, and we move to a more punitive notion of what criminal justice means. We've locked people up, we've not given them resources and opportunities to come back and successfully reintegrate. When people get a conviction, that's not something to be taken lightly. We have overlooked the fact that a conviction impacts a person's trajectory and has relegated them to a life of second-class citizenship that they don't deserve. People pay their time or do, do their time and they should be able to be rehabilitated, rehabilitated and well-adjusted. And that's what we're here to do, but we're doing it in a, with a better opportunity for, for actual change, and that's with all of you. I've met some wonderful people in programs that I didn't even know were available in Philadelphia, from Men's Fit, to Frontline's Dad, to Philly Auto and Parole, to Center for Returning Citizens, uh, Youth Arts and Self-Empowerment Project, and of course, Mothers in Charge. Um, they've been amazing partners, and they know they have so many more great ideas and accountability measures that make people want to be better, more so than I can have seen in any uh, time that I've spent being a public defender. So with our pre-entry coalitions, our re-entry coalitions, and of course, our participatory defense um, hubs, all based on community, all based on people who understand their own, um, we have been I say ramming criminal justice reform through the front door and we're not gonna stop until it's actually achieved. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here and I wanna introduce uh, someone that I have so much admiration and respect for, uh, Ms. Dorothy Johnson, who ran the first participatory defense hub. The results that we've been getting on in our justice system with their help and their force has been remarkable. We've been able to stop unjust uh, incarceration, unjust uh, prosecutions and we couldn't have done it alone. So Ms. Dorothy, I would love, I, I am honored to introduce you and I wanna thank you for being a partner. Thank you. She's my Shiro. <laughs> I love her. She's doing amazing things. Um, and I'm honored to be at this table and in this room with amazing change agents. I'm grateful and thankful to the Players Coalition because they're not only just uh, talking the talk, but they're walking the walk and I'm just honored to be a part of this. Mothers in Charge was founded almost 16 years ago after my 24-year-old son, colleague Jabbar Johnson, was shot seven times over a parking space. Um, I wanted to do something with my anger after I decided I was gonna live. Initially, I didn't think I would or did I want to, but when I did decide I was gonna live, I started Mothers in Charge, and that was in May of 2003. And initially, it was to support families who had lost loved ones to violence. I had an opportunity to serve on the Philadelphia Prison Board for eight years under our former mayor. And at that time, I started doing programs in the Philadelphia prison system and learned that there were amazing people there, oftentimes who had made a bad choice or a bad decision or didn't have money to get out or all kinds of challenges like that. And I knew then that this issue was bigger than me and colleague. It was bigger than just the violence that we see, and we still do that, and that's a big major part of what we do, but we also know that we are working to change the whole system and how we all are affected one way or another, indirectly or directly. So uh, we do lots of different programs for folks who are coming home. At my, time, in, at my time on State Road, I worked a lot with the women there at Riverside Correctional Facility as well as the juveniles, and um, started to do a lot of work to support them and then we started a program called Women Working for a Change. And that's a program that we are so proud of that Kira has supported us and has been our speaker at several, several of the graduations. But it's a program where women who are coming home from incarceration get a chance in a 10-week program to get all the things that they maybe never even had, you know, in terms of uh, grief support or drug and alcohol treatment and all the things that they needed in addition to job training and, and self-confidence and all the things that 
oftentimes got them where they were on State Road or at Muncie. And there's a woman downstairs. I wish she was in the room. I guess she didn't know we were here. But Valerie Todd, I met her almost 10 years ago at Riverside Correctional Facility, and she's now the facilitator for participatory defense as well as our anger management class that we do every Thursday at Mothers in Charge that we've done for many, many years now. And it's just amazing to see the things that are happening and changing within people who have the potential to be so much more than what's on a sheet of paper, or what a charge is. So we are honored to be a part of this work. We're true change agents. We're not going to stop until we do what we need to do. And as long as it takes, we're going to be doing it. Um, and, and just really need the help and support of everyone here in this room, as well as those that are not here and couldn't be here today. We need everybody working together. None of us are safe until we're all safe. None of us really benefit from the work until we're all involved in it. And it's really rewarding. You'll be surprised how much you get out of helping others who need maybe sometimes a hand to just be who they can be, who they were born to be, and giving them a purpose that they can live with and be a productive citizen in this city and across this country. Because Mothers in Charge is a national organization now. We have 10 chapters across the country doing this work. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. That's awesome. My name is uh, Darren Thompson from Impact Services. Uh, I am honored to be on this panel with such great folks who are doing great things. One of the things and components that I believe will assist our men and women to transition back into society is that we need to have collaborative efforts, uh, whether that's collaborative efforts with city departments, employers, uh, community stakeholders. But I believe collaborative efforts are the things that make change uh, necessary and possible for the folks that we serve. Um, I had to write a quote for this event. The quote that I actually wrote was, people say that it takes a village to raise a child, but the truth is that it takes a village to support all people who are working towards change and personal growth. We need to create a collaborative network with value-aligned partners to help people achieve their goals. So as you can see here, Malcolm said it earlier, that we have 50-plus employers and 20-plus uh, service providers that are here. And it shows that we can actually work together as a unit to make a change for the folks that we serve. So I believe that what we actually need is more collaborative efforts uh, instead of folks working in silos doing a disservice to the people that we serve. Uh, I want to introduce next Julie Wertheimer, uh to give her remarks as well. Thank you. Um, pleased to be here on behalf of Mayor Kenny and his administration today. Um, and it's great to see so many of the city's partners represented in this room and um, in the other rooms. Um, the city is really strongly committed to working with its partners to safely reduce the jail population, reduce the racial and ethnic disparities that we know persist throughout the justice system. Um, we're also incredibly focused on diverting people from the system altogether, not criminalizing substance use or behavioral health challenges, not criminalizing poverty. Instead, we're trying through the mayor's budget to invest in communities, in education and workforce development opportunities, and support those who do encounter the justice system. That's why, for example, the city offers a fair chance hiring grant for employers. I know some of the employers take advantage of that that are represented today, but we would like more to. Um, and the city knows it, it can't do it alone. You heard a lot of our partners talk about collaboration. We also believe collaboration is the key. And that's why we're really proud to stand here today with the community leaders, partners, and advocates who have played such a key role in helping those who have come home stay home. So, thank you. Good morning. My name is Daryl Burdell. I want to thank everybody on this panel for inviting me, you, Darren, everyone else. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little nervous, so please forgive me. Uh, I'm an ex-felon. I just came home about six months ago, seven months ago, from doing a 20-year federal bid for armed bank robbery. I, got, I came home in uh, September and started working with Impact. Impact has impacted my life. 
They helped me get a part-time job and then helped me get a full-time job. They helped me get my license. And everything else that you would need to be able to support yourself, do what you need to do to get your life back in order. So that's the main reason why I'm here, to be an actual person that came from the system, to be out here to say, it can be done. You can't come home and change, but it's all up to you. You know what I'm saying? So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.